morning, buddy. Morning. 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 You know, I had a, I always had my conversation to and from, uh, to and from church with uh, Brother Rogers, and uh, a couple things, he goes, you have the good news, and, and uh, that's something we ought to be shouting every time, every day, the good news, so it's the good news of Jesus Christ, Amen. and knowing that he's coming back, Amen. and the Amen. second thing is, we were talking about the weather, and how we had that big rainstorm uh, about a week ago, and down there pulling all the gear up, tractors on the gear up in the river, and the river comes up in the park, and everything else. And then they, they uh, the meteorologists have predicted another storm, another rain that's lasting. We need to fill that river back up again because it been pretty bad. But you know. If, when the meteorologist uh, comes on the news and says, hey, there's a snowstorm coming, I can tell you right now, Terry's going to send me out to the store to go get crushed pineapples and, and condensed milk or uh, evaporated milk. And because we're going to make snow cream because it's a prediction, right? And, then that, and, the, and the stores are empty, the bread shelves are empty, the milk's empty. I think everybody assumes that if we're going to have a snowstorm, it's going to be for a month that we're going to have to survive on our own. But, you know, but the meteorologists, they can hit and miss uh, whether the storm, whether we're going to get snow or not get snow or a storm or not. But everybody else, you know, when the meteorologist makes that announcement on the news, there's a snowstorm or coming or whatever, everybody's headed for the store. They leave work a little bit early. They yeah. Leave yeah. The store and get their stuff. The stores and the shelves are empty. I remember uh, Jerry Klein over there at uh, Jerry's One Stop. He could just start his own rumor. Hey, there's a snowstorm coming, and that storm will be flooded. They got a bread <laughs> mill before the end of the day. And there was nothing coming. But the predictions were made by the meteorologists, and, and that's how much faith we put in the meteorologists, right? We're putting it in the radar and their technologies when there's a snowstorm coming. And can you imagine if mankind took oh, this serious? What the Bible has to say okay. about us. That's right, amen. We're, and our, sh our, st our the shelf should be empty because yeah. he's coming. The That's shelf right. should be empty because he's our Father. That's the only way stuff. the Father is through the Son. Yeah. So the, the predictions are made. And yeah. it's going to be. So many right. promises were fulfilled in all the prophecies, all the predictions that says a Savior is coming. Yeah. And sure enough, thousands of years later, the Savior came Amen. and died just to be sacrificed. The predict so the promises had to be. And then when he died and resurrected, he said, I'll be back in three days. He, did. he rose in three days. He did. Yep. And when he rose, you know, that fulfilled the promise that Jesus Christ had placed before us, that it had always been told. Can you imagine the faith if we put that much faith in the Bible? And the scriptures we do in our TV and our meteorology. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. That's right. If you want to rise, turn to your hymnals, page 72. We'll sing first, second, and last verse of it. Won't be very long.
God, it won't be very long. Amen. Amen. I was thinking about what Brother David was saying. There's they, so much truth to that. But then I got to thinking there's, there's another side to that as well. You know, I, I was telling people, um, who was I talking to? Some, some people down at work that's um, from um, Michigan and places like that. It migrated down here. It seemed like everybody does. But anyway, talking about the weather, you know, and, and I was telling them like here, you know, all they got to do is say there's a chance. And man... Our supermarkets are empty. I mean, bread and milk is gone. Everything's gone. And, uh, you know, people do that. But then there's some of us who, you know, we live by faith. And, and we, uh, we trust God. But, you know, after the uh, swarm's over, and yeah, you know, it, it starts coming. We see a flake or two. Well, I'm going to run to the store just to find out that there's nothing left. Yeah. It's all gone. And I was thinking about uh, how that... Noah, for all them years, yeah. preached that the flood was coming. Yeah. God was yeah. going to destroy the world and the yeah. earth by water. And people laughed and people yeah. procrastinated and didn't believe. I, I don't care. And, and they stood out and they, they watched Noah. And I've preached on this so much, you know. Even people that helped Noah build the ark didn't get on it. Right. Think about that. And there they stood making fun, seeing that great vessel that God had told them how to prepare. And all of a sudden, here come a drop of rain. One guy said, oh, somebody laughing so hard he just slobbered on you. Next oh, yeah, thing man. you know, here come another, here come another. And then the ground began to bring up water. And right. All of a sudden, people began to panic after everybody's on the ark. And God shut the door. Yes, Church, when God shuts the door, the Bible says yes, that no man can open it. And then all those people began to holler and beg and bang and let us in, let us in, but it was too late. And same way with the virgins. They went out, they slumbered, they slept. And I'm talking church here. Yeah. Yeah. The church has slumbered and slept. Yeah. They, they've put it out of their mind. They, they've took it out of their songbooks. They don't sing about the blood. They don't preach about That's the cross. Right. They don't stand up against sin. They don't. They become tolerant to the world's ways, and and they just don't. They they they've lost focus on what they're doing. And one day, you know, they've slumbered, they slept, and and one day that trumpet's going to sound, and it's going to be too late. They're going to be caught wanting. Their lamps and their lights have gone out, and it's going to be too late. Amen. Will you be ready then? Jesus is coming soon, church. I I don't know when. I don't know how long. But I believe that it could be any moment the Lord could return. And we need to be ready. Any moment we could be called out individually. And we need to be ready. Amen. Will you be ready then uh, when when He comes? Praise God. That's something to think about. Just look around. I mean, our churches are empty. And uh, people are just not concerned no more. And if the churches are full... And they're not concerned with the truth. They're, they're just going to have their ears tickled and for entertainment purposes. Praise and not all, as I say, but yeah. we know what's going on in the world yeah. today. And church, we need to continue yeah. to yeah. preach yeah. the Word. Amen? Uh, to be ready. To help warn people about that coming day yeah. when Jesus comes again. I, I, I want to be ready. Amen? Yeah. And, and I, I'm, I'm getting ready. And I hope you are as well. Good to be in the house, Lord, this morning. Good to see everybody. Brave to cold. I tell you, just... Um, it's, it's going to be cold this week, so everybody be prepared and, and remember to check if you got neighbors and elderly people. Remember to check on them and uh, think about them. And as we got to get down in some really, really cold temperatures, so uh, um, be of help if you can and and just pray and ask God to put somebody on your heart. He'll He'll put somebody on your heart, man. Don't let's don't be a bunch of Levites and Pharisees and priests and you know just see somebody in need yeah. and just. Well, wow, why didn't you tell me? And, you know, right there they was, right in front of us. So, anyways, uh, Lord help us this morning. We've got a lot to pray about. Let's remember to sit and to pray for Dad. He's not feeling well this morning. Roxanne, uh, pray for her. I was talking to Susan this morning. She had to go to the ER and uh, having some issues and complications. But doing better now, so pray for her. And, uh, glad to uh, see Susan here this morning. She's uh, doing, doing well, so pray for her this morning. And uh, continue to pray for Polly and... Uh, Hazeline and all yeah, the sick and the shut in this morning, Amanda Sproles and uh, those that would, would love to be with us this morning, continue to pray for um, uh, Booty, Paul Weaver, remember him as 
he's still having his oxygen levels are still a little bit low. And uh, Dennis, pray for him. I hadn't heard from him, and just uh, lift him up to the Lord in prayer. I miss him this morning. Anybody else this morning? Uh, uh, Kermit and Cindy and th- their family. Yeah, um, I tell you, you know, when someone gets to where they've got to have care twenty four seven. It takes a lot out of the family. Um, I've been there and done that, and uh, and many of us have. So let's let's lift them up to the Lord and pray for them and uh, remember them as well. Anybody else this morning? Remember Mullet and uh, see he Raleigh or Florida? Raleigh. Raleigh. He's back in Raleigh, so pray for him and uh, Stephanie. Is she's traveling? Uh, she'll be traveling back to school, I imagine. And. Uh, lift them up to the Lord in prayer. God, just give them traveling grace and safety. And anybody that travels on the roads, I covet your prayers when I'm on the road. And brother Dwayne, he's on the road a lot. So remember him, especially having to go up the mountain and uh, uh, for his safety, Brother John. Amen. Amen. Certainly we will. Preacher, I mentioned till the last Sunday about the, having that heart catheterization done. Well, they they were able to do that, and it wasn't what we expected. Or what they had expected. Uh, she does have a tumor, and they are getting ready to schedule her. It's not cancerous, but it's got to come out, and they're going to have to crack her chest open to do all well, this. So she's really going to need a lot of prayers. Yeah. I told her the church was praying, and she appreciates it very much. And Haley, the girl that had the cancer, she's got one more treatment left, and she's cancerous. Thank the Lord. Amen. Amen. Remember RB's sister, Gerilyn. Tony, we was talking about it, and uh, Gerilyn's really having a very hard time with his death. Yeah. So lift her up. Amen. Certainly we will. Certainly we will. Anybody else this morning? Our Aunt Linda in Alabama that fell and broke her hip, we thought she was going to get better, but she's not. It's bad. It's just a matter of time. Lord, touch her. Amen. Like she said, uh, my best Gerilyn, she is struggling. And I know my sister and, and my family in Arizona is too, but she was pitiful on the phone yesterday. So, Amen. Uh, we're all struggling over, over this. Amen. So remember my our family. Yes, amen. Let's remember all of these. Anybody else? I, I do want to pray. There's a friend of family in Virginia that works with my dad. Uh, her daughter um, and her husband were in a bad car wreck with broken bones and broken pelvises and things like that, emergency surgeries. Just pray to the Lord, lift them up, touch them, heal them, and, and guide them. Amen. Bring them back Amen. So much prayer about Good to see her. Um, Good friend Chris Higgins with us this morning. Pray Amen. for him. Lord knows what he needs this morning, and Amen. lift him up. I know um, um, he's he trusts the Lord, and, and God's faithful as we Chris and I was talking this morning. Amen. And always faithful. Might not be in our time when we want it and when we need it, but God's always on time. His time. Amen. So let's let's pray for all these. Lord knows there's so many. Pray for the church this morning. My heart's burden for the church and yep. uh, God's people and uh, pray for Israel. Amen. Let's remember them this morning. And uh, Any unspoken request by raise hand. Lord knows all about these and That's special right. requests as well. Let's bow our heads and go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank and praise You for another privilege of being here this morning, God. Amen. Lord, I can say with a full heart this morning, God, I, how good it was to wake up this morning, God, and Breathe the breath of life. Right. God, I was excited yeah. about coming to your house this morning, God. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that you've uh, seen us through another day, God, that you give us another beautiful sunrise to be able to behold this morning, God. And Lord, we say all that giving you the praise, God, yeah. Lord, for what you've done. God, your creation. Lord, Paul said in one place to... God who created the heavens and the earth and the sea and all that in them is, God. That's my God this morning, Father. Lord, all things were made by Him and for Him, God. And Lord, we thank You for that this morning, God. Lord, if we can just behold, God, and Lord, just begin to think and, and Lord, see with our eyes, God, what You have done. Father, how it would just lift us up this morning, God. Lord, we thank You, Father, for Your Son, Jesus Christ, most of all, God. Lord, that He came and He lived the life on earth, God, for us, Father, showing us how to walk and to live. And, and God, how did He suffered so much, how He, was, he was, uh, bore our sins, God, and 
Lord, took our stripes, Lord, and He He bared the agony of the cross, God, and Lord, despising its shame, Lord, but looking ahead to the glory that was set before Him, Father. God, every one of us here this morning, God, every man, every born of, born of woman, God, every person that's ever breathed the breath of life, God. Lord, we deserve the penalty of death, but I'm glad, thank God. I'm glad that Jesus came and He took that penalty for us, God. And Lord, He cleanses from all of our sin that repent and call upon Thy name and put Thy faith and Thy trust in Him, God. Lord, if we can just get that message out today that Jesus Christ still saves, Father. Lord, the modern church today, they're they're living in their own salvation, God. Lord, good deeds and well-spoken, educated, Father. And Father, just all these things, God, they, they think that that aids them in their salvation, God. Their political and social status, God. Their uh, intelligence, their intellect, God. Their education. But Lord Paul, one of the greatest men that ever walked on the face of the earth, other than Jesus Christ that was educated and, and powerful and smart. And, and God, he, he was set up, Lord, to, to be somebody. God, He said, I count all these things as dumb right. that I might win the excellency of the Lord yeah. Jesus Christ, God. Lord, as Brother Swagger said so many times, to, to become the President of the United States would, would be a step down from the calling of God in Christ Jesus, Father. Lord, I thank You this morning, God, for those truths and men and women of God that are stand behind the Word of God in the sacred desk. Lord, not, not afraid of what men can do for them, but yet fearing the higher power of God and His faithfulness and His judgment. And, and Lord, with, with clarity and purity, without uh, uh, hesitation, God, and contradiction, proclaim the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. God, I thank You for that. Lord, we need to get back to holiness of heart and life, God. We need to get back to the preaching of the Word of God. Lord, we need to get back to calling sin, sin, God, and standing up for righteousness, God. We need to get back to soul searching, God. Let the light of Your Word illuminate us this morning, God, shining through the very joints in the marrow, Father, and every nook and cranny and searching our lives, God. Lord, to see if there be anything in us that would hinder us, Lord, from serving You and, Lord, securing eternal life. God, we pray this morning that we just continue to stand up for the truth, fight the good fight of faith, God. Lord, that we can hear them words on that day when Jesus does come. Enter into the joys of the Lord, thou good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few. Behold, I'll make you ruler over many. But God, unfortunately, so many people's going to hear those words. Depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I never knew you, God. Lord, help us this morning. Lord, open their eyes, God. Lord, unstop their ears. Lord, take the veil off their heart, God, so they'll, they'll see and hear and understand this morning, God. Father, we thank You, Lord, for the truth, God. Let it ever ring in our ears and our heart. Let it work that which You sent it to do, God. Lord, continually improving our lives, giving us peace and hope, God, leading us in the way of everlasting. For Thy name's sake, Father. Lord, now we pray for all the sick, all the afflicted, all the requests here this morning, God. Lord, You know our struggles. Lord, You know our fears, God. You know our battles. You know our sicknesses, our heartaches, God. Lord, You know everything about us this morning. So, God, we open ourselves up like a book this morning, God. And, Lord, we ask that You just, Lord, begin to, uh, Lord, unfold those pages, God, and and, Lord, begin to wipe out the things, Lord, in our life that hinder us, Father. Lord, uh, that You just heal us of our sicknesses and our diseases, God. So many people here this morning has loved ones, God, that needs prayer, Father. And, Lord, we don't just say it to be heard. We don't just say it to reflect ourselves and as the Pharisees did. We don't do it with repetition, Lord, thinking the more we say it, the, 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 the better chances we're being hurt. God, when we say it, we believe it. And God, we know that You hear it. And God, we know that You're ready to act upon it, God. 
And Lord, we pray earnestly, God, for each and every one. Those that's going through a battle, Lord. Those that's in a desert right now, God. Lord, I, I think of Paul again, God. Lord, when he accepted Jesus Christ, God, you didn't send him to theology school. You didn't send him to the, the a seminary. You didn't send him to the, the tabernacles or the great cathedrals or, or the, the priests, God. Lord, you sent him out to a desert. God, a desert where he became unwound, unlearned, God, where he became empty, God. And Lord, you filled him with your spirit, God. Lord, Sometimes that desert's a good place, God. Right. Lord, sometimes that, that dry land, God, is where we need to be, God, so that we can empty ourselves. And Lord, we can begin to realize what we need this morning, Father. So God, fill us this morning. God, Lord, just pour it out of heaven this morning, God. Lord, let us worship. Let us preach. Let us sing. Let us pray, God. Lord, just fill us and baptize us with the Holy Spirit this morning, God. Lord, we need the comforter this morning, God. Lord, to have service, God. And Lord, we pray that you just poured out on us this morning like a mighty rushing wind, like a powerful waterfall, God. And Lord, just let us mind you this morning. God, we pray for this nation that we live in, God. Lord, as we enter into another election year, God, Lord, that you just guide us, that you lead us. Father, that you just help us to, to go, Lord, and do our, our, our duty, God, and, and Lord, to the best we can. Lord, we got to remember, God, we're not voting for a preacher. We're not voting for, uh, Lord, a, a, a religious leader, God. I, I wish we had somebody. We had one. We had one. That was Jesus. And what they do, they, they cast him out. So, Lord, it, it's only fitting today. They're, they're not going to have us, God. Lord, you said they hated you. They'll hate us. But God, help us to put a man in, Lord, that, that'll bring morals back to this heathen nation, God. Lord, this God-forsaken nation that's forsaken you, God, Lord, and turn uh, to their own ways like a dog's return to his vomit, God. Lord, they're wallowing in the mire, God. And, and Lord, not only are they doing it, but they admire those that do it with them, God. Lord, we need a cleansing of our government, God. We need, we need it to be gone through by the Holy Ghost, God. So God, Lord, the, the man that's right, that, a, that a at least restore values and decency back to this nation and, and laws and continue to give us our freedoms to stand in your house and proclaim the good news and the gospel of Jesus Christ. God, that's what we need this morning. God, we don't need no more legislation. Lord, this world ain't going to be changed by bills and by government. Lord, it's going to be changed by the heart, God. When a man's heart is changed, a, a nation will change, God. And Lord, we need to change a heart this morning, God. Lord, that's the only thing that, that's going to help us, God. So change our heart. Help us to fall upon our faces as slain, God, in the spirit and dead men and praying and waiting on the Lord. And you said, they that wait upon thee shall mount up with wings of eagles. They shall run and not grow weary. They shall walk and not faint. God, help us this morning. Brother Beecher said one time, if you can't run, walk, but don't faint. God, so many people's fainted. Lord, so many people's given up. So many people's turned away to vain jangling and false doctrine, Lord. They've been had their ears tickled till it's just lulled them in, God. But God, they're blind this morning, God. Lord, they've, they've gone down the broad way that leadeth to destruction, God. I don't believe the broad way's lust, as bad as it is. I, I don't believe it's fornication and I don't believe it's drugs. I don't believe it's, it's sin in general. The broad way is the way of religion. Yeah. Yeah. Lord, it's a it deception. Is. It's a deceiver. It is. The Bible says they think they're right, but they're wrong. It, it leads to death. It does. It does. So God help them this morning. Open the eyes. Lord, if, if possible, God, send, let the, send a quake to every church across the nation and the globe today, God. Let's put the fear of God in them, Lord. 
God, let, 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 it, let, let it move them with fear. Lord, if it takes fear, God, Lord, bring them back into the family. Lord, let them turn from their wicked ways, God. Lord, Jesus didn't, He wasn't talking about the sinners. It was His people that had turned. Lord, He said, turn from your wicked ways and come back to me and I will abundantly pardon. Lord, the sinner God, they can't, they don't have nothing to turn back from. They're, they're living in right, sin. Right. But God, He's calling out the church and your people. God, so God, we call them out this morning. Amen. Lord, I can feel, I can feel the Spirit. I can feel the calling this morning, God. Lord, let it call us all this morning. Don't let us hold back. Lord, it's time we take the it's time we take the boundaries off the altar. It's time we knock the wall down that keeps us from going to the altar of God. He's yeah, talking about the wall of our borders. God, the devil's put a wall up in church for a long time now. God, he, he's kept people from going and, and going to the altar and crying out and repenting and seeking the face of God. And Lord, you see where that's got us today. So God. We humbly, Lord, we faithfully, God, we, we, we call upon You this morning, God, out of a pure heart, God, that You search us this morning, Father. Lord, we're not claiming here to be better than nobody else, God. We're, we're crying out for ourselves in this body this morning. And Lord, let it start a fire in us, God. Lord, that would start a fire somewhere else. Lord, like on the day of Pentecost when they turned this, the world upside down. God, the Bible said it shook the entire world, God. Lord, let it, let it, let it sit again this morning, God. Lord, the church needs revival. And God, we pray it again right here this morning. Lord, I love you. I thank you. Lord, bless every heart, every soul here today. Let us feel the presence, the power, and the omnipotence of the Almighty God among us Amen. today. And let us leave here filled up, our cups running over, ready to, Lord, to fight the battles that's before us, God. Pressing toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. We'll thank you. We'll praise you. We'll give you honor and glory for it all. We'll lift up forever. Lift up your Son, Jesus Christ. For it's in His name we pray and ask all these things. Amen and amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Yes.
Lord, you are so amazing. Thank you, God. Yes, the Spirit filled a uh, church of, of South River Baptist Church, God. Yes. What a wonderful place, God, yes. that we can come to gather around with the, our, the saints of God and feel the main presence, yes. God, just the moment that we walk in the door. Uh, uh, actually, Lord, when we just wake up in the morning, Amen. Amen. That's Lord, right. God, uh, to come and serve you, God. Thank you, God, for that privilege that we have to be able to serve you, Lord. Thank you, God, for all you've done for us, God. You're just, Thank uh, you, Jesus. Lord, sometimes we just stand in awe, yeah, uh, Lord, yeah. as we see you work, God. And, we, and it catches us off guard, and we finally come to ourselves and say, that, well, what do we expect? That's the God we serve. Yeah. God, thank you for being so good to us, God. Thank you for your blessings, God. You gave us last week. You watched over us and you took yeah. care of us, God. And uh, Lord, we thank you for that, God. We thank you for your mercy, God, seen and unseen. Thank you. Uh, Lord, we thank you for your long suffering with us, Lord. Sometimes we act, get out of here and act foolish, God. You get, uh, Lord, your long uh, suffering for us is amazing too, God. I, I, I'm almost out of words. Uh, of how great and how wonderful that you treat us, God. Uh, we don't deserve it, God, but thank God, uh, Lord, you had a plan. Amen. Uh, way back in, in the eternal eons, back in the day, God, uh, Lord, to, to uh, uh, Lord, to see what what what's going to come about for us, Amen. God. Sometimes we do get down. Uh, Lord, but I'm glad the Comforter abides in us. Amen. Yes, he does. Uh, Lord, help us to always remember that, God, that, uh, Lord, you always, that your, your word says you'll never leave us. No matter. That's right. That Amen. Never, Praise never God. Never means never. Uh, leave us nor forsake us. Forsake us means the same thing, forsake. God, help us to remember that, God, when we get down and out, God, uh, that you're always there beside us, God. We love you for that, Lord. God, I do pray for these uh, uh, sick folk, God. I pray for the uh, answered prayers, Lord. I pray, God, that you give Miss Hazel Lean and uh, uh, Polly and the shut-ins, God. Give them good days, God. I pray, God, that you just give them uh, blessings beyond measure, Lord. Uh, take care of them. Those of us that uh, uh, our church family, God, keep, uh, bless us, Lord. God, it's like the preacher says, Move our hearts, God. We pray earnestly and fervently, God. Sometimes, uh, Lord, we just want to give up, but then uh, a thought will run through our mind. Oh, God, what did Jesus give up halfway up to Calvary? God, we, uh, we're nowhere near in that shape, God. So help us, God, help us to continue on, uh, Lord, until you return for your children. God, I know it's going to be worth it all. Uh, Lord, we thank you for that. God, if there's one here lost, uh, God, you're the only one that knows the heart. God, I pray, Lord, uh, the one here lost, save them today, I pray, today, God. Uh, Lord, there may be one here that's getting away from you, the one that's got away. Uh, Lord, just let the Holy Spirit convict them and let them know the love of God and how the love of God wants them to come back to the fold, God. Lord, thank you so much for your grace and mercy that you showed me, God. Uh, the Bible says you're not a respected person, God. So I know if you do it for me, you'll do it for anybody. So I pray, God, that prayer be answered. Thank you again for this time to be able to come and praise you, uh, so worship you, Lord. Uh, God, I thank you for uh, this uh, time to be able to give back to you, God, because you've been so good to us. I pray, God, that you'd bless this offering, Lord. I pray, God, that you'd use it to your glory, God. I pray, God, that you'd get the uh, uh, praise and honor and glory yes, and everything yeah, that's done the rest of this service. Yes. And now, God, I want to pray for my pastor, God. Yes. Oh, God, thank you for preaching right, God. I pray, God, that you'd use him this morning, God. One of the few men of God that's left, God, that'll stand up, uh, God, and tell, tell folk what sin is sin. And it changed. And I praise God for a pastor that says, 
us, Lord, what thus saith the Lord God. Keep him in your word, God. Use him for your glory, I pray. God, you, you, Lord, uh, hide him behind the old rugged cross. God, uh, Lord, keep him strong, I pray. Amen. I pray, Amen. God, that the church family would pray for our pre preacher every day that uh, he crosses our mind, God. We don't, get, we don't even have an inkling of understanding of what's on his shoulders, God. So, Lord, I pray, God, you'd use him, anoint him. I pray, God, that you would uh, uh, bless his family. Bless all the families, God. Uh, uh, extended and close, God. Yes. We'll yes. thank you and praise you. Thank you're Lord. so good to us. God, I can't get it off of me. How good you've been to us. Yes. We thank you and love you. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Amen. Page 298. Thank you, Thank God. Thank God.
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, bless you, Brother Roger. Uh, hallelujah. Let it rub off on all of us. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. We are so blessed. You Thank you, kid. Thank you. Hallelujah. I know without a shadow of a doubt, no matter how many people was there, no matter what their status was, no matter how popular, how rich, how many songs they wrote, Taylor Swift did not feel the presence of the Lord last night. But I feel Him right here this morning. Think about that. All them people went out to Kansas City in minus five degree weather, set for three and four hours yeah. to watch grown men. I like football now. But watch grown men running around with a bag of air under their arm. Come on, preacher. And yet, and look at us. couldn't right. walk across the street to come to church this morning. That's preaching right there. Right Think there. about it. How many people stayed up and watched every bit up? Paid. You had to pay now. Peacock yeah. will. Hey, yeah. they, they stole it. Us poor people couldn't watch it. Right, right. <laughs> Paid to watch the game and stayed up late to watch it, but yet they're too tired to come to church this morning. For free. Amen, preacher. I mean, God help us. if you're a Kansas City fan, you've got a little bit of bragging rights. You've got a couple hours of brief satisfaction, mm. but yet they rejected something that would feed them for life. Mm. Well, I doubt that. That would give them joy unspeakable and full of glory. You're right. That would fill their hearts till their cup was running over oh, yeah. with joy unspeakable and full of glory. If you got your Bibles this morning, turn with me to the book of Mark, chapter 12. Book of Mark, chapter 12, we're going to read verses 41 through 44. 41 through 44. And the Bible says in Jesus, that's who we're talking about, amen. That's, that's why we're here. Yep. We're not here to lift me up, to lift you up. We're oh, not here to talk yeah. about South River Baptist Church. We're right. not here to promote the Baptist. We're not here representing the culture. We're here talking about Jesus this morning. Amen. Every song we sung, every prayer we prayed, every blessing we got, it's, it's about Jesus, right? Yep. It's all about Him. Uh, well, I don't want to get ahead of myself. Uh, and Jesus sat over against the treasury and beheld how the people cast money into the treasury. And many that were many that were rich cast in much. Yep. And there came a certain poor widow, and she threw in two mites, which make a farthing. And he called unto his disciples and said to them, Verily I say unto you, that this poor widow hath cast more in than all they that have cast into the treasury. For all they did cast in of their abundance, but she of her want did cast in all that she had, even all her living. Let me read 43 and 44 again. And he called unto his... Jesus was always trying to get his disciples to learn, right? Church, when we, when we get to the place that we can't learn, then, then we're in trouble. Right? Jesus was always trying to show them something. And, and oftentimes that took them physically seeing something for Him to tell them uh, what He wanted them to understand. In other words, it took like an earthly example to give so that they could understand the heavenly uh, significance. Right? Yeah. Too many people today, they're, they're, they've got blinders yeah. not on the side of their eyes where they should be, where all they can focus on is the cross and Christ and, and heaven and, and, and eternal life, but they got blinders on the front of their eyes. And, and they can't see clearly. And, and so they can't never grasp what the Spirit is trying to tell them, what the Spirit is trying to give them. The spiritual food that we need today, right? And so Jesus calls his disciples over here and he says, I want you to see something. 
And there was a reason for it. Now, this wasn't coincidence. Jesus already knew what was going to take place, as He always does. I always like where Jesus kind of, uh, the Spirit calls out in the Word. Not that Jesus always calls them out or tries to embarrass them, but when they murmur and whisper and, and, and Jesus and always the Spirit lets us know that Jesus knowed what they were saying, right? I, I'm glad, thank God, I'm glad that Jesus always searches our heart. That He always knows our thought. He always knows our intent. That's what we're going to talk about this morning, our intent, right? That we can't fool Him. We can't fool the Spirit of God. I, I can fool you and you can fool me, but we can never fool God. And He calls the disciples over here and said to His disciples and said to them, Verily, truly, I said to you, this poor woman. Now, I can imagine the disciples being there, being kind of unaware that this was actually a spiritual lesson to them, you know, uh, you know, preachers and deacons and uh, 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 church authorities, uh, boy, they don't like nothing more than hearing that old offering plate jingle when it's time to take up the offering, right? I told you a story about Brother Zeb told me one time about a, uh, his, uh, a preacher's son come home from college and had two tickets to the football game. He said, Dad, I'd like to go to the football game. And uh, he said, well, sure, I'll go with you, son. So they went and got in there, and it was a sold-out stadium, you know, thousands of people. And he looks at his dad being a preacher and uh, said, Dad, how would you like to preach to this crowd? He said, I don't know about preaching, but I wouldn't mind passing my hat. Yeah. <laughs> and so, you know, they're sitting there and come over there, and they're hearing all this money going into the usury. And, and, and Jesus said, this poor widow. And, you know, that's just like people today. We, we, that's the way we do, right? And, um, you know, here comes this, this, all these Pharisees and these priests, and they're, they're throwing all this money in, and we'll get that. Y'all, I'm not going to preach on tithing, so don't, don't, don't get tight, tightened up here. Uh, don't get tightened up here. But I want us to learn something. And, and, um, and so, um, you know, they come in, and uh, they... Here comes this widow and she throws in her money and Jesus wants to see that. And, and all these other people, the rich and people that's got a lot, you know, they're throwing in all this money. And, and really what they would do is they would break it, break it down. It'd be, and I've told you this, so I don't want to dwell on it long, but just to refresh your memory. It'd be like, you know, um, me and uh, uh, Tammy there, and we come up and put our offering in and, and it's a plate and you can hear what we're casting in and there's no currency bills, right? Uh, she's got... Two quarters, and I've got two quarters, right? Well, I'm going to say, well, I'm going to go get my quarters broken down into nickels, right? And she comes, throws in, uh, I throw in all them nickels. Man, Brother Larry's hitting it heavy today, boy. He's, he's doing good. Hearing all them nickels hit the plate, and here comes Angie, tossing two quarters. Well, you know, yeah, old stingy over there, yeah. right? And, and that's the way life's perceived. Church, we got to get past what we perceive. You're right. I, I've told you, and I've told you, I've told you, and I prayed myself. Brother Zeb told me years and years ago, Brother Larry, if there's a gift that you pray for, pray for the gift of discernment. Yeah, Above everything else, pray for the gift of discernment. Yeah. Right? And, and so he calls them over there and says, This poor widow cast in more than all they which cast in treasure. And he said, Well, Lord, how can that be? We, we, our ears have been leaning over there. We've seen what's been going on. And he goes on to say, For all they did cast of their abundance, but she of her want, and did cast in all that she had, even all of her living. Think about that. Now I want us to look at two things here first of all. I want us to look in what Jesus said, that she cast, but she, she did it of her want. Very important now. Of her want. I don't, listen, I, and I've, I don't care. People will come up and they'll do something and, and, and they'll, they'll murmur. And they don't want to do it no more than a man in the moon. Right. They'll, they, they, you know, they're worried about what people will think or, or what people see. And, I, and they do all the, and, and they don't do it because they want to do it, right? They do it for personal gain. Oh, yeah. These preachers today, they're not preaching because they want to see souls saved. They're not preaching because they, they're concerned about 
the condition of man's soul. They're not preaching because they're, they're called to preach the gospel. They're, they're preaching because they, they, they're getting something out of it, right? They're getting gain. They're getting popularity. They're getting fame. They're getting fortune, right? They're driving jets or, or flying jets and they're driving, and there's nothing wrong with that. But Jesus said, this woman has cast in of her woe. This woman made it a special event. She, she done it because her soul desired to do it. Right? She wasn't thinking about nothing else. And then he says the second thing here. She cast in of her woe and then cast in all that she had. Think about that. All that she had. And I want to I wanna talk this morning on all that we have. All that we have. Now, I'm not, you know, we, we hear about that. But, but if we just step to the side for a minute, and most of us we think, well, we've been blessed, right? We've, we've got a lot. We've all got more than we need. I promise you that right now. And, and, and. And we, we think about that. We think about all we got. And that's what we look at. And, and, you know, as we come to the end of the year, companies do it. And, and they'll, they'll look at their inventory and they'll think what they got. There was a man in the Bible that done that. And he began to see all that he had. And yeah. he thought, my, my goodness, man, I've done pretty good for myself. But, but I've got a problem. I'm still bringing it in. And yeah. I've got no place to put it. And, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take it. To, I'm, I, I, I just don't have room for it. And, and so I'm going to take it, and I'm going to find people that need it. I'm just going to give it away because I, I care for people. I love the Lord, and I want to help him. And I'm just going to give it to them, and, and, and I, that, that I won't have to worry about it, right? No. He said, no, man, what am I going to do? We worry about stuff that, that has no value, has no application spiritually, has, has no determination in our outcome in life at the end. And we'll, we'll worry and we'll fret and we'll think, what in the world am I going to do? And, and he said, well, I'm just going to have to build bigger and that way I can store it all and have more and I'll have need of nothing and I'll be good. I'll be set for life, right? And that's the way we think sometimes. Now look, I, I, there's not a thing I told you I pray for God to bless all of you. And I hope He has and I hope He continues to do so. I really do. But what we're dealing with here is intent. And that's what I want us to look at this morning. In ten. Even in a court of law, everything derives on intent. Whether it's, it's a criminal or whether it's a police officer or just a, if, if a police officer has to use uh, a fatal force uh, to stop something and it goes before the court of law, he, they have to prove that it, what was his intent when he took those measures, right? Think about it. God always looks at our intent. We boast and we brag and we walk around and we're prideful and we think about what we've done and we, 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 we make that a big deal, you know, and everybody's looking at us and liking us and boy, Brother Larry done this and he done that. He went over there and he went and seen these people. He, he gives all this, he gives all that. But see, what God, God don't look at none of that. God looks past all that. All right, Brother Larry, you did all that stuff, but what was your intent? Exactly. What's your intent? If my intent wasn't to please God, then it, it profited me nothing. No, it, oh yeah, it made some friends. It, it, it gave me some accolades, right? It, 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 it makes me look good. It reflects on my family maybe. But, but, but what was my intent? Did, did I do it because I so love God and I'm so thankful for what He's done for me and, 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 and that was my sole purpose, God. I'm doing this for You. I know who You are. I know what You are. I know what You've done for me. And God, there's nothing I could give away, God, that You won't supply back to me and meet my ever need, God. And, and, and God, I'm doing it because I love You, right? Because I want to. Yeah. I, I, when it comes to doing for God, Listen. remember the commercial, was it Geico or something where all these people are sitting at the dinner table and this old guy says, I'll get it. He's got that real little alligator arm and he can't reach the bill. Yeah. Oh, I'll get it. And then finally somebody picks it up and pays That's it, right? right? Yeah. That's what we've got these really short arms when it comes to really 
intent and wanting, right? And so I want us to look at the intent. What is our intent in life today, really? What are we here for today? It, you know, are we here to serve God? I felt it in my soul, my spirit. Man, the spirit of God run through every yes. joint this morning. Yep. And man, from the top of my head down to the hey, soles of my feet. I'm so glad I was here. I said, God, if this is it, God, I, I, my cup is running over, God. I came to serve you. I came to uh, receive from you, God. I came from a blessing. I didn't come for no other reason, God, but to lift up your son, Jesus Christ. And my cup is running over this morning. But our intent in life, we, we do all of these things, but what is really our intent? And, and here's this, this little old widow woman coming up here. And, and it had to be embarrassing for her, right? I mean, think about it. Here she is among all these notable men and these Pharisees in the synagogue. And here she comes, just a little old widow lady and don't have no means of making money and no social security and... and, and, and she, she scrapes up everything and she says, listen, I'm, I'm going to go to the house of God and I'm going to give everything I've got to God and I'm not going to worry about nothing, but, but I'm, I'm going to take it. And I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to I'm gonna go through the embarrassment. I know they're going to look on me narrowly and I know that people thought, well, what in the world does she even go through all that trouble for just, just two mites, mm. right? Two, why does she go through all that trouble? See, but Jesus knew what she was doing, right? Here's all these Pharisees. They're boasting and bragging and, and talking about each other and throwing all this money. But the Bible said they only gave of their abundance. That's it. Listen, if, if we give that way to God, we're, we're all robbing God. Yep, we are. Even if we just give of our abundance, we're still robbing God, right? Think about what God has done for us. We, we think about, you know, it's easy to come to church and pay your tithe. That's what most people, hey, these people today and all these churches and these heretics and these false prophets, and they're making a kid. They, they don't care. They're, 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 they're hirelings. Yeah. They're hire, they don't care about the sheep. And the sheep don't, hey, they're making them feel good about themselves. Y'all just go on, God loves you. Do the best you can, you know. No, no, no word about repentance. No word about sin. No word about doing right. right. No word about hell. No word about hell. Hey, just, well, they are worried about Everybody's going to heaven when you die, right? right? Brother Chris and I was talking about that uh, for church, about some of these pastors that we've seen going down that road and what God has revealed and it's just it's just continuing a, 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 the, these men and these hirelings deceiving uh, the church they're, they're, they're wolves in sheep clothing and all they want to get is their own gain and those people hey as long as he don't step on my toes and don't make me feel bad and I can go out here and live any way I want to and, and I, I'm good to go right yep but Jesus said she cashed over a want and all that she had. When we think about what do we need this morning? What do you need this morning? Now we all need something, right? But again, I want, I want us to really get past everything that we own materially. And everything that we have. And they, church, let me tell you, there's a, there's a lot of people a whole lot worse off from me. We, we get like old Job, man, we like sitting on that old pile of ashes and feeling sorry for ourselves and woe is me and we, we, not even thinking about people that's a whole lot worse look let me tell you something you, we don't know what not one single person goes through in this church right. every day we see each other on Sundays and Wednesdays and Sunday nights if we're lucky and fortunate and, and, and we, we don't know what each other goes through we, we have no clue and, and, and yet Jesus said, here's this woman, she gives everything, and here's all these people just boasting, bragging, and enjoying herself. And they're, they're down in her, and even the disciples, I'm sure, thinking, well, Lord, why are you pointing out her? She didn't yeah. do anything. But Jesus said, she done more than anybody. Yeah, she, did. she done more than anybody. So as we examine our, our motive this morning, let's look at our intent. What is our, our spiritual intent this morning. That's what I want to leave with you this morning because I think this is important for the church. Why are we doing what are we doing? Why, why are we here? 
Why don't we, why don't we claim what we claim? What, why don't we do what we do? Is it, is it really, do we live like this Monday? Do we live like this on Tuesday? Do we live like this on Wednesday and Thursday and Friday and Saturday? What is our intent when it comes to the things of God? Are we fully, uh, are we fully engaged? Are we willing to say, God, I, I, everything I have, everything I own, everything I need, everything I want, God, it, it belongs to you and God, I, I, I don't need none of that stuff. <sighs> Come on, preacher. Yeah. There was a young man in the Bible had it all. Now here we go in 10 again. I'm just trying to teach you something. That's good. You, you know it. I'm just reiterating it. He had it all, right? Heard Jesus. Everybody likes a good message, right? Everybody likes it. Uh, you know, everybody likes to hear about, well, you know, we, we can have eternal life. Nobody likes to think about dying. Let me tell you, death is sure. Death is as sure as, as the breath of life we're breathing right now. But nobody likes to think about that. Everybody likes to think about the happy places, right? And, and heaven is, you know, this new culture we got, this, this sick, perverse, ungodly, whiny, I mean, culture that we live in today, they always got to, hey, I'm glad I don't need a comfort horse or a comfort bed or a comfort blood. Hey, I, the comforter abides in me, amen. I'm glad I've got the Holy Ghost of God. He goes with me everywhere I go. I don't got to take an animal a comfort pet. Oh Lord, I'm just you know so pitiful, and I this this pet just gives me brings me comfort. They take them on campus now. They even can take them on airplanes. If you got a doctor who says that's what you need, man, you know I, I I wish I knew a doctor good enough to do that for me. I'd I'd go out and buy me a mule, and I'd go to the airport, and I'd say the doctor said I gotta fly to a certain place, and I gotta I gotta take this with me. That's right. And I dare you to tell me I came. Now we're laughing, but church, this is this, this is the honest truth. This is the world that we're living in. So true, right? But the Comforter, I'm glad I, he goes everywhere I go. Amen. He abides in me. He abides with me. He's for me. We preached on that not too long ago. He abides, the comforter abides in me. But I want us to look real quick at the intent. What, what do we really need? If God required us of everything right now, what, you know, what would He strip us down to? That rich young ruler, he said, Lord, I, I've heard the message, and man, that's exactly what I need. I, I want that eternal life. He said, what do I have to do to get it? Jesus said, you know the commandments. Yep. Love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, soul, and my neighbors, I say, do, do all these things. He said, Lord, I obey your prayer. I've done all these things for my youth. Up. Jesus knew you had. Yep. He said, but one thing thou yep. lackest. He wasn't expecting this now. On. One thing you lack. He said, go and give all. Jesus didn't say, well, I know you're rich. I know you've earned a lot of money. I know you've got a lot of wealth. I know you've got a big house. He said, but no, no, he said, one thing you like. He said, if you'll do this, you're sure to have eternal life. Yeah. He said, go and sell all that you have and take up the cross and follow me. The Bible says that that rich young man bowed his head, turned around, yeah. and left sorrowfully because he was of, of increased with goods. He was rich. Think about that. Now, Jesus wasn't really saying you've got to do that. Now, preachers make a, they, they make a sermon out of that as well. You're right. Amen. See, they make a sermon out of that as well. I, I hear it all the time. And we're talking about intent. But Jesus, see, He knew that. Jesus looked at the man's intent. Do you really want eternal life? Yeah. Are you serious? Mm -hmm. or, or if you want it, here's what you've got to do. You've got to turn loose of everything that you have. That's right, preacher. And you've got to, you got to turn around and you got to come after me and follow me. You got to be willing to lay everything aside. He didn't say go. You had to do it. But Jesus looked at his heart. He knew that he wouldn't do it. See? Jesus knew that that man cared more. As much as he wanted eternal life, he cared more about wealth right. than he did eternity. 
And so he turned around and he left. Jesus said, all those things, there's nothing wrong with them, but it's what you think about those things. That's what's going to keep you from going to heaven. You can keep the commandments to the cows come home, right? You can be a good moral person all your life. You can be the greatest husband in the world. You can be the, the best preacher anybody's ever heard, right? But if you've never been born again, and you've never been saved, and you've never been filled with the Holy Spirit, and you thirst for the things of the world, you're not going to make heaven your home. You're right. And that's what's wrong with the world today. Too many people sold out for worldly, yep. earthly pleasures. Huh? They're preaching this false doctrine that God wants us all to be blessed and God wants to return a hundredfold. You know, and I've said this and I'm getting off the little subject, but while I'm here, I'm going to go there. Come on, come on, preacher. It occurred to me, and I'm not the smartest, sharpest knife in the box, right? But I watched for years all these telethons. Mm -hmm. And thinking, they tell these people, if you'll sow a seed of $1,000, God will pay all your bills off. Your house, your rent. Y'all heard it? They, that's, that's the words they say. Now, some of them say, I'll return to you a hundredfold, which would be, what, $100,000 or a million dollars, a hundredfold or whatever. But anyway, you know what I'm saying? And I'm thinking, hmm, what if they would sow that seed? Will God not pay off the bills that they're trying to collect money for? You mean God only works one way? Right? That's good preaching right there. See? Intent. Intent. Let me tell you, when you build a ministry up that's so big and you've got so much going on you can't be, pay your bills, that's not God's will. No, it's not. Because God said, I'll provide. Did He not? I'm not going to have to beg for money. Huh? Not that that's out of the way. That's good. Back to our local station. Let me tell you, the book of John... It's called, and, and here's where I want to get at. What do we really need, right? Yeah, yeah we need clothes. We need food. You know, we, there, there's that. But even Jesus even covered that. Why do you worry about these things? He said, when God knows, knows that what? You need them. God knows we need these things, right? He said, but why are you? He said, but seek ye first. Matthew 6, 33. Yep. The kingdom of God and His righteousness and all these things will be added into you. He didn't say seek an a evangelist on TV and so a seed. Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, holiness of heart and life. And if you live that life and you trust God and you put your faith in Him, God's going to give you what you need at a minimum. God can't hold those things back from you according to His Word. That's right. Right? And everything else is a blessing. And I tell people all the time, if you'll read the book, if there's two books that I always recommend people that read first, and especially young converts and new people that's been saved, right? The book of John, the book of I Am. Jesus tells you. Amen. Tells you who He is, right? Yeah. And, and, and what you need. Yeah. Everything you need is found in the book of John. Yeah. Jesus said, I Am. And we're going to go a few of them, we're going to go home. And then, the book of Romans. Yeah. The way to the I Am. Yeah. The road to salvation. I love those two two books. If there's only two books that I could have in the entire Bible that I know would save me, sanctify me, and get me to heaven, those would be two books I would want. Yeah. Which I, I'm glad I got them all. Amen. Yeah. Glad I got them all. So, what do we need this morning? Look what Book of John is called the I Am book. Amen. I love that. I am. It's all through, Jesus is trying to tell people. I am. Let me tell you, I'll tell you like I told them up at Leonard's Fort one time and draw a big crap. They thought I was going to give some phys, uh, psychological or, or theological speech. And, uh, I said, because uh, I said, you know, when Jesus said, I am, you know, you know what that means? 
And he said, what? <laughs> Golly. Lord, have I been so long with these people. Yeah. I said, when he says I am, that means that he is. Right? Right. right? right? Yeah. Simply put. I don't got to go to seminary to learn that. Oh, if yeah. Jesus said I am something, then I say, Lord, you are that. Yes, and I believe it and I receive it and I accept it. Right? The book of I am. Yep. It's been a copy book. In other words, whatever we need in life is wrapped up in Jesus Christ. Do you really need anything else? Now, we want a lot of other stuff, right? Yes, we do. The older I get, the more I learn to live like that. Not Amen. always. Amen. But, but I start really seeing things that I want yep. and things that I need. They're two separate things altogether. There's a lot of things I want, but then I start asking myself, well, what do I really need? Amen. Right? And, and, and I, that's a pretty good motto. And I don't know if that's something that God puts in us, but that's just the way I am now. I want this, and, and, but, but what do I really need? And most of the time when I go with my wants, I find that I usually got a lot of stuff that I don't even need anyway. I just wanted it, right? So what does Jesus say? Let me tell you, let me give you in a nutshell this morning. All we need, everything in life that we need is found in Jesus. He says, I am. He lets us know, I am. I am. I am. And church, we can bank on that this morning. You might, you might, look, I, and you say, well, preacher, you don't understand. No, I do. I, I could, I tell you, I do understand. And, and I, I could, and you know, sometimes I've not been where somebody else is, but let me tell you, when I see where they're at, they're an inspiration to me. They're an inspiration to me. I, I'm not like that old Pharisee who said, well, God, I thank God I'm not like this guy over here. You know what I mean? Let me tell you something. When God takes you somewhere or through somewhere, God's trying to get you to somewhere. Amen. Right? Oh, we'll sit there and we'll talk. We're like old Job's friends. Come on. Come on. Yeah, they're getting it now, boy. They, you know, what have they done wrong? We're, you know, yeah, we knew it. We knew it's too good to be true. Yeah. But do you ever stop and think that? God's, maybe you see somebody going through something and you want to be judgmental. And then you're like that old Pharisee and that old publican. Well, God, I'm glad I'm not like him. You know, I give 10%. Help no me. more. I give only 10%. I'm not going to dare go over that. Right. You know, if I've got 10 leaves on my mint bush, I'm going to take one off and give them to you, Lord. Right? And, and, you know, but have we ever stopped to think or the Spirit, just be so close to the Spirit, God says, you've not made that grade yet. Mm. Uh, we sit sitting there condemning them and judging them and putting them down, but really, God says, you couldn't handle what I put on them. Oh, that's good for us right there. Mm. You wouldn't make it. God help us. You, you, you'd go all the way back. You, you, you'd turn around. You, you couldn't handle it. You couldn't survive it. The Bible said that God looked at Job and said, Devil, have you considered Job? He's a good man, just, devout, holy, righteous, what, a man that, that excuses evil and loves good and serves me every day. Huh? Sometimes when we go through something, God's saying, You're worthy to go through it. Amen. I've, I've, I've hand selected you to go through this because I know you're going to do it. And when you come out of this thing, just like Job, we don't told, we're not told exactly the time frame. See, we read the Bible and we think this all happened in chapters. <laughs> don't we? Not over a span of weeks, months, and years even. We just think it happened in chapters. Well, Joe, you know, chapter 1 2, he's going through a rough time. By chapter 3, man, he's straightened out. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. Huh? Yes, it is. But when we get through that thing, just like Joe, when we get to the end of it, 
he, the latter is going to be better than the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. Think about that. You know, there, there was Job and there was his old faithful wife. Not old faithful wife. Excuse me, ladies. That's, there was his wife, his stand by me, his, his rock, his support, his better half. And boy, done got to her. She said, Job just cursed God and died. Boy, it didn't take him long to put her in her place, did it? Amen. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Why? You ever think about that? You know, not because he, he had disrespect for his wife, no. but because he had reverence for God. Amen. Hey, Amen. hey, wait a minute, ma'am. I love you in my heart and I would die Amen. for you right now. Yeah. You stood beside me through the, the worst things we've ever gone through in life. But we're talking about God right here. Hey, I'm going to have to put you behind me because God is before me. Amen. In 10. Right? And so, what do we really need in life? Let's look real quick. John, I didn't cover a lot this morning. Everything we need. I just want you to know this morning, everything you need. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what you're dealing with. I don't know your mental issues, your physical issues, your spiritual issues. I don't know. But I'll tell you this, I do pray for all of you night and day. I I do. I I lift this church up every day in my prayers. As Paul says, I pray for this church continually. The people I see every week and the people I don't see every week. but, but but, But God knows what you need this morning. And whatever it is, it can be found in Jesus Christ. Sometimes we get, our, we get so focused on what we're going through Listen. and we don't, we, don't, we don't see what Jesus is taking us to. Amen. See? And that's what the Bible says in Hebrews about Jesus. He despised us. The, the shame of the cross. Jesus wasn't looking at the cross. Y'all, people don't understand it. How He endured the cross. Jesus was looking getting past that and going and sitting back down on the right hand of the Father on high. He said, listen, that, I, I'll get... How am I going to do this? He said, because I, I'm seeing what's before me. Right. Once I do this, I'm in the home stretch. I'm going back to be with my father. I'm going to sit on his right hand where I belong. That's what I'm looking at. See, sometimes we get so focused on everything that we're going through and going everything else. We, we can't see the, the intent. What's your intent? Is it to get through this, this hardship? Or is it to make heaven your home? I can just go on and on. Yeah, man. I preached about it last week. That woman had issue, but her intent was made clear, wasn't it? That's right. Huh? She she made it, buddy. Her intent was, hey, she didn't care. She was going to see Jesus, yeah. amen? Her intent. What, what do we need? Uh, John uh, chapter 6. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. See, we, we focus so much on our physical needs and wants sometimes we forget about our spiritual wants look you you can eat steak three times a day and the best meals money can buy and you can have your pantries and cupboards full but listen if if if, if you're spiritually starving you're in bad shape yep, that's right. you're, you're in bad shape see a lot of times we think we think you know if we can just feed those fleshly desires that's filling those spiritual needs but it's not it's not. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Hey, when you eat of this man, he said, you're, see your wounds. Go, hey, that lady that throwed in those two mites, all that she had, she done tasted the bread of life. She said, hey, this ain't going to do nothing for me, but I know what God can do, so I'm going to give it all to Him. What I need comes from God, not from His two penny or His two mites, Right? When we begin to understand that what we need comes from God, we don't worry about what what we can get from the store or the grocery store or the shopping or the mall or or, or the car or what all that. Hey, we God, you're you're what I need. Verily, yeah. verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me hath everlasting life. I am the bread of life. I'm the bread. Think about that. Jesus told, who, if you eat of this bread, you'll never hunger again. Well, how's that possible? He's not talking about bread, bread. He's talking about something that satisfies the soul. Think about it. 
Jesus said, listen, this right here, it, it'll, it'll take away. I, I can fill your heart and you won't think about eating. Amen. You know, I tell you something that we don't do no more. And I'm not telling you to do it. You did, I, I believe that fasting is something that's Holy Spirit led. And, and, but <laughs> Brother Zeb said one time we've traded fasting for feasting. And that's exactly what we've done. Churches don't fast no more. They feast. Yeah. Right? And, and I've, I've fasted. Let me tell you, if you want to bring your, subject, your body subjection to the Spirit, you let it do without. Mm -hmm. You'll see how strong you are. Right? God, I'm going to give up a meal every day for a couple days for you. Whatever the Spirit leads you to do, you say, God, I'm going to do that for you. Boy, you skip that next meal and buy, buy this time the sun goes down, you so hungry, man, you think you're going to die. God, I can't do this. I'm just going to go nibble on a little something. Next thing you face deep in a big old pie or bowl of spaghetti or something like that. But see, when you start fasting, you say, God, I'm doing this for you. Not for show. Oh, the Pharisees love to fast. They, they'll disfigure their faces. They'll let you know they won't shave. Jesus said, when you fast, don't let nobody know what you're doing. I'll take care of you. The church is full of Pharisees. They love to be seen of men, right? But let me tell you this. If you want to get close to God, pray about fasting. You, you don't got to quit eating and drinking altogether. Unless the Holy Spirit leads you to do that, I'd recommend that you don't because most of you all be, might be preaching your funeral. You won't make it. I'm talking about God help me. What I'm saying is give up something for God. Some, not, you know, not something that you can give up. When we give the people that are in need, you know what we give them things that we don't. Yeah. Ain't that the truth? Oh, I'm hitting it now, church. We're taking up for the needy. Well, I don't need this. Let me give them that. I've had that thing for so long, I'm just going to give it away. Now, nothing wrong with that. Yeah. <laughs> right? But if when you start, you say, God, I'm doing this for you. God, I, I, I'm, I'm desiring to be filled with your spirit. And I'm telling you, it's going to be, oh, I made it, you know, I skipped one meal. God, I'm, I'm going to, I'm not, I'm going to skip one meal a day all week for, for you, God. And I'm going to fast. I'm going to pray. I'm going to get in your word, God. I'm going to get that spiritual uh, 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 nutrition that I need, God, to go forward. Lord, my intent is to please you and to be filled with you. And you, you know, I tell you what, it, it gets tough. No devil will throw everything at you and he'll, 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 man, he'll just make you think that you ain't gonna make it and give in and cave. But, but I fasted. I fasted. I've done, not bragging, but I've I've done three day fast without water or food during the revival time. And I'm telling you, it took me a while to get there. I failed many times. You know why? Because I was doing it for me. And then, then one night I I never forget. I got hungry for God during the revival up in. Johnson City, and I was laying there on a, on a uh, rollout they had in the uh, the chapel because we had a bunch of it was a, it was filled all three nights and and I was sitting there and and I'd been fasting and I, I, my body was weak and I'm thinking God I, I can't do it and God and I I made every justification Lord I'm going to faint I'm going to pass out. And, and I, I said, but God, I want to do it for you. And I began to pray and the Spirit began to come on me. And He filled me. And man, He, 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 he just... It, it, I didn't even think about eating or drinking. And man, I got through that through three days revival and I, God was just all over me. And I'll never forget it. I'll never forget it. Because I true, God knew my intent. God knew I wanted a taste of heaven. God I knew I wanted to experience His power and His holiness and His righteousness and His glory. And when it, just when I thought I was going to give in, I couldn't make it no more, God came down and gave me that bread from heaven. And it, it, it sufficed me. Church, I'm telling you. 
You want to get real with God, you start fasting. You pray about fasting. God, what do I need to give up to get caught? You know, that's one thing that's wrong with us Christians. We've got Our lives are filled with so much stuff. We don't make room for God. we got Jesus shoved away in the corner of our heart somewhere. We'll break Him out on Sundays. But Jesus said, I'm the bread of life. Let me tell you, scientists says the body can't live without food for 21 days, I believe it is. Right? Yeah. yeah. Without water, seven days. Yep. But let me tell you, you can't live at all without Jesus. Amen. You can't live at all without Jesus. Amen. Jesus is eternity. Yes. Here and after. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. He said, I'm the light of life. We don't have to walk in darkness. No. He said, I am the door. We can open it up and walk through. We can open it up and let Him in. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He said, no man comes to the Father except by me. Boy, I, I feel sorry for all them Muslims. My heart breaks for them. I feel sorry for the Catholics. I feel sorry for the Mormons. I feel sorry for all these people that think they're... I feel sorry for, for Oprah Winfrey. It tells people there's many ways to God. When Jesus Himself said, I am the way, no man comes to the Father except by Me. No man comes to Me except the Father draws Him. Huh? You just can't go anytime you want. You don't get a get out of jail free card. When the Spirit draws you, that's when Jesus said, you come to me and I'm going to take you back. Amen. Amen. I am the door. And he, he, he went on to say, and then after this life, he said, I'm the resurrection of life. I wish I had time to preach on this. I'm the resurrection of life and the life. You know, Jesus asked that crowd, said, do you believe that? If you do, you'll have life. He said, all these people out here in this graveyard, my mama, your parents, people that's gone on before us, they've got hope. In Jesus being the resurrection, right? Yep. One day they're going to see Him again. And He said, if we're alive and we believe, when He comes again, we're going to see Him too. Yep. Amen. We're going to be called Amen. up together with Him to meet Him in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. What do you need? Whatever it is, Jesus said, I am. I am. I just want to stop on that I am the light. Something hit me there when I read that over. It's amazing to me how much darkness the church likes today. Amen. Jesus said, I'm the light. He said, whosoever believeth in me, said, said uh, you, you'll have the light of life. You'll not walk in darkness. Why do church feel the need to be in darkness so much today? Jesus said, because they love darkness rather than light, because yes. their deeds no. were evil. Right. Huh? You know, I, I wouldn't want to... I couldn't imagine preaching to a church with all the lights out and a big Amen. spotlight on me right. where I couldn't see the, the Holy Ghost working on those people. You know, how could I do that? You know, God, He reveals things. And so they'd rather sit in darkness to hide what they're yeah. really experiencing. That's why they love it so much. Church, we're, 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 we, need, we need help, right? We, we, hey, Jesus is everything we need is what I'm saying. What are you, what's your intent this morning? Are you willing to give it all away? Are you willing to say, Lord, I, whatever it takes, I'm going to make heaven my home. Lord, whatever it takes. And let me tell you something before you answer. Be careful. You're right. Be careful. Because God, He'll call you out on it. Oh, yeah. He'll see how serious you are. There's a lot of people willing until they find out what it takes. Yeah. Right? Brothers said, said people preach faith by the yards, but they're dodging the channels through which it comes. Oh, that's right. People don't want to pay the price. They just want to get there on a flowery bed of roses. Ease, wealth, health, and prosperity. Doing what they want. And in the end, gain eternal life. But listen, it don't, Jesus said, because straight is the way. And narrow the gate of his life. He said, few there be to find it. What do you need? Are we going to be like the young man that began to add it up? No, I can't do it. It's not a good deal for me. You turn around and walk away never to follow him again. Or we're going to say, Lord, everything I've got is yours anyway. Right. Or whatever it is. Whether it's much or whether it's little. Right. Hey, hey, don't, don't sit there and, and, and make yourself feel good. You know, you say, well, I don't have as much as so-and-so, so he ain't talking to me. You, you can have a dollar 
and be as bad off as a millionaire. Yep. Right. It's what you think about what you've done. What you're willing to hold on yeah. to, what you're willing to let go of. Would well, you stand to your feet this morning? Mm. Heavenly Father, I could go on and on this morning. Yep. Yeah. God, there, there's so much to cover here this morning, God. And Lord, I, I thank you earnestly for the Spirit. Yes, I God, I thank you that I can preach and learn at the same time. Yep. Amen. God, I thank you, Father, even though I study, God, I, I thank you that, Lord, that that fresh manna comes from heaven. Amen. Amen. Lord, at any time, any minute. Yep. God, I, I'm glad that the Spirit deals with me as I'm dealing with your Word, God. Lord, I know that it'll never come back void. Nope, nope. God, I'm glad that it'll prosper, and I know it'll prosper where you send it. God, it will accomplish what you please this morning, God. Lord, as we're all gathered here today, God, Lord, only you know our intent. Right. Lord, only you know our need. Lord, only you know where we're at spiritually. God, I'm not concerned with what people think. Lord, I'm not concerned about what people say. God, I know deep down in my heart of heart, God, You know what's there. Yes, you do. In each and every one of us, God. Lord, I, I don't have to prove anything to man. God, I, I don't fear what man can do to me. I don't fear what man can say about me. I don't fear what man can, can use against me. God, I, I fear the living God. Lord, when I stand before Jesus Christ on that day of judgment, Lord, everything will be revealed. Everything will be open. God, there'll be no excuses. Lord, there'll there'll be no lies. There'll be no there there'll, there'll be no uh, um, uh, 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 things made up. God, we will give an account of everything that we've done according to the word of God. The Bible says whether it be good or bad. God, many of us that are faithful. Many of us that are saved, many of us that are on that road, uh, that straight and narrow path, God, we, we fail. And God, we will stand and give an account of those failures. We will. Lord, those bad things that we've done as the people of God. And Lord, we will lose rewards yeah. on account of that. But God, I'm glad, thank God I'm glad that if that foundation of Jesus Christ is there, Lord, our soul will be saved. Now, Lord, that's, that's no escape. Lord, that's no say, well, as long as I make it in. Oh, no. God, because the Bible said, I have not seen, neither has ever heard any, okay. even in the heart of man, what God's prepared for them that love Him. That's right. God, I believe this morning, if we can only grasp what our reward is going to be in the end, God, we, we would... We would fall on our faces and our knees and cry out, God. So right. And Lord, we would realize what we meant. And God, we would want everything that Jesus wants us to have on that day. I believe We're heirs with Christ. Yeah. God, everything He has is going to belong to us. Right. And God, help us to work. Paul said, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Yeah. God, help us to stand worthy before Jesus on that day. God, we love You with all of our heart. Let us go forward. Father, search our intent. Lord, help us to press on. Lord, just like the, the, the elderly lady, God, the widow woman, God, let us cast it all in right now, today, God. Don't hold back anything. But Lord, let us give of our want and let us give of our possession. Lord, all that we have. Lay it on the altar with You. Take up the cross and follow You. God, we'll be blessed. I know that oh, this yes. morning, God, You'll supply all of our needs according to Your riches and glory. But God, if there's any intent of holding back, Lord, I, I think about Lord Simon. Lord, wouldn't it, uh, 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 Lord, my mind fails me. They sold the possession of land. And God, they held back part of it. Yep. Oh, Lord, that, Lord, I could go on and preach another 30 minutes on that. Right. God thinking nobody would know. Yep. God thinking that, that it was only them. And Lord, they thought, well, it's only right. It's, after all, it's our land. We'll, we'll sell it for a certain amount and give a little bit to God and to the church and, and we'll keep the rest for ourselves. Yep. And, and But the Holy Spirit called them out and they lied to the Holy Ghost. And Lord, they fell dead in the shoes they stood in. 
Back we ride. God, that brings goosebumps up my spirit yes, right now. Yes, it does. Lord, if we commit anything to you, Lord, let us be honest about it. Don't let us hold anything back, God. Oh, God, help us. Lord, there's judgment if we do. Yep. So, God, let us be faithful. Yep. Let us trust you. And let us, Father, give to you wholeheartedly this morning. Help us to do according to your will, God. Help us to go out here with the intent on serving you. Let come what man. Oh, God, help us with that. And not Amen. waver from that, God. Meet every need in here. Now, Lord, I, I'll say this in closing. There's some needs greater than others. Yep. God, I pray that you meet their needs first. God, do. God you've blessed us. You've helped you us. Have. God, you, you've not let us done without even the least among us, God. you supplied to us, God. Mm -hmm. So, Lord, we pray that you just, Lord, take those that are in the greatest need and, and give them, God, open God, our eyes Lord. and let us, let us give, God, and let us help, Father. Lord, each and every one, Father. That's our responsibility. We're a family of God. Yep. Thank you. Lord, we should, we should help one another. Lord, without reservation, not do it and hold back, not do it grudgingly, but do it out of want. You're right, preacher. And we'll thank you and praise for it all. Now, Lord, just prepare us for the next time we're together. God, let this, let this search. Let us leave here today, Lord, and search our intent. Let the Holy Ghost search our hearts this morning and let us understand them. Lord, our true intent. Are we doing it for ourselves? Are we doing it for others? Or are we doing it for God? Lord, I want to do it for you this morning. Amen. And I thank you and praise you and I love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Send somebody's hand, let them know you love them and appreciate them.